SQL is a, uh, a language that's been around since the 70s and early 80s. And it's one of the two languages in the world that has survived um, for a really long time. C being the, the, the base language that we use for, to build operating systems, and SQL, which is the language which we use to, to look at data. And it's remarkable that the languages have lasted so long. Um, um, and it, it, it's lasted so long because it's, it's the right abstraction. Um, for the most part, uh, being able to join tables together in ways so that you've got all these different tables and you can describe the relationships between these tables as sets and you can filter the data and reduce the sets and you can aggregate over those sets and allow you to produce results. Um, and it, it does it in a very direct way. It's, compl it's actually complicated, um, but, but super powerful, like C is complicated and super powerful. Um, Looker, um, has, we've, we've actually made an advance in Looker called, it's called Symmetric Aggregates, which I'm going to talk about, which is solving, uh, I usually don't get up and talk, but I like to talk about this because we've solved a, tr a problem that's 25 years old. Um, and I'm going to show you the problem first, and then I'm going to show you how we solved it. Um, so um, in SQL, when you compute a sum or an average, um, you have to be computing it against the base table and the from statement. And what does that mean? It means like you, 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 you write a query and you're going to co compute something against the orders. The only aggregates that you can compute are the ones in orders. If you try to compute an aggregate from something else, it's going to be wrong, right? If you, um, so this very much directs the way that you write SQL. Um, it also makes it really easy to make mistakes. You can, you, you can write a query, um, add a join in, and all of a sudden your query no longer works. Um, and I'm gonna, I'll, I'll show you a, a, a really simple example of this. So I'm going to pop over here to a SQL runner, and I'm going to run a really simple query here. I've got a table of users. It's just got users in it. And one of the columns in the users is the age. And I'm going to run the query. And can you see the number? It's 44.9697. That's the average age of the users in this table. OK, really tough query. Most, even if you don't know SQL, you probably can understand this, right? Uh, now, now the, the thing that's weird here is that if I add a join in here, like I want to join in the orders table, like I want to know something about the orders too, you can do a left join, or just do a join um, orders on orders dot user ID equals users dot ID. Um, so this is going to combine the two tables. And when I run that, I get a new number, which is 45.2. What happened? It, it, I didn't do anything to the user's table. It should, it should compute correctly. Well, this is, a, this is a problem because of the way SQL works. And I'll show you how, why it's doing it. Um, if we run a query against the orders table here, we're going to, the, the dash dashes are commented out. So I'm going to select the user's ID and the age from users. And I'm just going to get the first 10, and we'll take a look at it. And so the first 10 users, well, there's one, well, there's one row per, per user, right? But if I join in the orders table, what happens is that SQL makes a new table, which is the combination table. And the user number one is repeated four times. User number two is repeated one time. And so when I'm going and averaging these users' ages, I'm getting different results. I'm actually averaging something like the weighted user's average age as opposed to the average age here. Um, and that's not what I want. What I really want is the average user's age of somebody who's ordered, not the weighted average user's age. And in LookML, in the way that LookML works, it simply stated, we've solved it. So when you create models now, you can create aggregates in all levels. When you add measures to your user's table and you join them in, Looker actually writes those queries so that they work and they're available. And that's kind of remarkable. So the way series SQL queries work is that first you do the relations, and then what you do is you get a new, a new table, and then you do the aggregate on the new table. What, what Looker does is it logically combines those two steps in one, in one process, so that we aggregate as we, as we join, and so that the, the, they're retained. And the, the aggregates are computed based on the primary key of the table that you're joining into, that you're joining together. So the user's table can be computed correctly. Um, 
that what this does is it radically simplifies the way that you write SQL queries. So SQL queries that used to take two or three queries together, you can actually just write in one query now. So if you wanted to look at revenue and expenses together, you can actually join those things together through the entity that was sold, right? Um, what did it cost me to, to make it? What did I get paid for? How many times did, what did I get paid when I sold it? Um, there are all these crazy new analytical patterns that you can do. Um, things like attributes. Um, um, if, you, if you have an, a, an attribute table of a user, like their, um, all of the different types of brands that they've bought. Say you've got a user brand table, which is all the brands that they bought. If you wanted to join that into your orders and find out brands that people buy together, you would, you would fear that because that would be a one-to-many join and you wouldn't be able to do that and, and your, your query wouldn't work. But in Looker, you just join that in and it works. So let's see this in action. I'm going to start with something simple, which is a uh, video store. And then normally in a video store, with, what you'd probably start is where most queries would start is that you'd start from the revenue because that's where you normally start. And then you'd roll up the revenue from, from so I would start with my rental and I would uh, um, get the total revenue for the rentals and then I could look at it by which, which particular film I had rented the most of and that would probably be, or which store or what date and that would be the level of aggregation that I could do. But, uh, but it, suppose I wanted to care, I cared more about like what genre movie I, I, I was renting because movies can have multiple genres or I care about uh, what actor was the top grossing actor. Well, th those questions are traditionally really hard to ask in SQL. Um, but in Looker, in LookML, we really just start with the entity which is the, the, the film, the copy of the film I have in, in inventory and I join in uh, the rental and the payment and the customer that made it, and then I can join in the film actor, which is, uh, these are all the actors in the films, and I can join in all the categories that that film is in, and it's really simple. I can read this. This is really easy to read, right? Right? It's not hard, right? And then um, I add two measures. I add the total amount of money that I've ever made and the total replacement cost for the films that I've got, my revenue and my expense, just two things, right? So I've got, I just do the joins, I add two measures, and boom, I can do a full analysis of my, of my store, my video store right there. How much, of, for all time, how much replacement cost of the film? What's the total amount that's been paid? What's the, um, the number of items that I have had? And um, how many times have they been rented? All in one shot and one query. Um, I can build um, a, a compound measure, which is like how long it take to pay back. I can put, combine these measures from these two different tables and look at it, like wow. And then I can look at how fast it takes to pay things back. These are all just single, single SQL queries. Um, so I mean, we can go um, e explore this. And so I can see month payback, but I could, instead of looking at it by month, we could remove this and we can look at it by category and see which category of film pays back fastest. And Looker is just writing the queries. And if you want to see the SQL that it writes, it will frighten you to death. <laughs> but it works. And if, to, if you're interested in understanding how this works, I'd be glad to talk about it afterwards. So that, that's symmetric aggregates. Um, the crazy thing is that there's a whole new world of analytical patterns that are available. They're just remarkable. Um, co, uh, basically co-investing, you can join your tables back in more than once. Um, um, you can look for paired behaviors. You can, you can do these really interesting sloppy joins and find relationships between things. Um, so the, the patterns, we're, we're just beginning to discover all the new patterns we can build with it. Um, um, if you're an existing customer, all you need to do is flip the symmetric aggregate switch um, and, and, and you're rolling. Our Anis will be glad to help you do it. Um, if you're a new customer, it's already turned on, and um, that's it. Thank you.